Finally! It doesn't matter where The Rock has come back to! Sing along with The Rock is over! With the show matching the massive expectations going in from the Angle Mysterio opener to The Rock Lesnar headliner, SummerSlam 2002 went down in history as one of the greatest pay-per-views the industry has ever seen, delivering big from top to bottom with the final image seeing Rock as he also did for Angle and Jericho in the past two years putting over Brock for his first world title in the company, with the big talking point of the pay-per-view as much as anything that happened in the ring being the electric atmosphere in the main event which saw parts of the Long Island crowd turning on Rock in his last match for the year. As with the common knowledge of it being his final match for the foreseeable future, reports from the Nassau Coliseum indicated on a small minority of around 10% of the crowd looking to turn on Rock coming into the building with chance starting already during the heat broadcast an hour before the pay-per-view went on the air, with the minority sheep mentality taking over from there to result in a split crowd by the time of the main event. With Rock after ending another all-time memorable run by elevating Lesnar in one night from the strong rookie potential to a legit main event player going forward in an almost passing of the torch match to the next generation with his days as the full-time top guy in the business coming to an end, spontaneously taking the microphone minutes after the pay-per-view went off the air to play off the reaction by encouraging the response to turn heel on the crowd in a hint of what's to come next in 2003 following the shooting of the rundown movie with new undisputed champion Lesnar as the youngest person to ever hold the top title opening Raw in Madison Square Garden for his title win promo to see the New York crowd responding with Rocky chants back and forth in a similar reaction to last night, bringing out Triple H followed by Undertaker to set them up as next in line for a title shot. With the SummerSlam follow-up segment seeing Raw opening way above average with boosted curiosity coming off the pay-per-view kicking off the first quarter with a 3.7 rating and over 4.8 million viewers in the most watched Raw opening in over a month, with the broadcast from there with the realization that Rock is not gonna appear on the show and Lesnar having no advertised role for the rest of the night, seeing a unique viewing pattern with the first quarter for one of the only times in the past year not ending as the lowest rated of the night with the second quarter dropping slightly in viewership with Rock making his first public appearance since SummerSlam earlier in the day during the company's SmackDown Your Vote pledge to participate promotional event in the city to see him getting the biggest babyface reaction from the New York crowd by a wide margin, while responding to the crowd reaction the previous night in an interview with the company website minutes after SummerSlam went off the air saying that it's a New York thing with the audience in the Northeast very attitudinal and the possibility of the response was talked about between Rock Pat Patterson and Vince McMahon during the day of the show which resulted in him starting to spontaneously heal on the crowd mid-match similar to WrestleMania 18, saying that he thrives off the fan energy whether it's for or against him and either way he's gonna wink and play to the crowd under any circumstance all the way through the match. Raw continuing the unusual hour saw Eric Bischoff in his Madison Square Garden debut promoting a special guest to reveal Jimmy Snuka to a big ovation from the New York crowd, giving him a WWE Lifetime Achievement Award before airing a tribute video package to set up the three-minute beatdown coming up next, with the Snuka appearance despite being unadvertised driving Raw's biggest viewership spike of the night to jump over 500,000 viewers to peak the first hour between 9.30 to 45 p.m. by a big margin with a 4 rating and 5.3 million viewers, before the show minutes following the Snuka segment coming back down to normal range in the final quarter featuring Jericho laying him out on the way out for the Flair SummerSlam match follow-up saying that he had Flair beat with the figure 4 before singing his version of New York New York in response to Flair interrupting his Fozzie concert last Monday, getting major heat from the crowd through a 3-minute commercial break and a similar idea to his Thousand Holds promo on Nitro in March 1998 to set up a match with Jeff Hardy coming next.
Chris Jericho vs Jeff Hardy opened Raw's second hour to give the show a 400,000 viewers bump back into the 4 rating range, going 11 minutes at the top of the hour with Jericho getting his heat back after the loss to Ric Flair last night, with Raw with a depleted crew on the night without an appearance by either Rock Michaels or Flair, selling out the Garden with over 16,000 in attendance to continue the company's hot streak over the past month with major sold-out venues for both Raw and SmackDown. Rebounding strong in August after the company's May to July 2002 quarter business report during the week which started the recent decline after the initial stages of the brand split, showed significant drops in every aspect of business compared to the previous record February to April 2002 quarter or from the same time frame in 2001 with major declines in pay-per-view buys and house show attendance largely due to the split crews with significantly less star power compared to a year ago. With the next quarter expected to rebound big on the back of the strong August which featured the massive Australia Stadium show along with boosted attendance across the board and what is expected to be one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year for SummerSlam. Raw's unusual formatting on the night continued past 10.15 p.m. with Test saying that he's gonna burn the American flag as a cliffhanger heading into a commercial break bringing out Booker and Goldust for the save followed by Kane finally coming out to pop the garden in his return after nearly six months out with injury, laying out the Canadian group to drive Raw in the usual toughest time slot of the night into the most watched full quarter of the broadcast with a 4.2 rating and 5.4 million viewers, bringing Kane after the past several weeks of hinting at him potentially returning on both brands including advertising him on a SmackDown tour against Tangle for next month back to his original place on Raw to add another needed major babyface player to the brand, with the other top name originally targeted to fill the void in Bill Goldberg who is set to return to the ring this week and in Japan for the first time since the end of WCW last January, addressing the rumors of him potentially negotiating with WWE now that he's back in the business, saying that the first meeting between him and McMahon was originally scheduled for a few months back before being delayed due to him injuring his arm, noting that the biggest obstacle to them reaching a deal would be McMahon's demand of him working a full-time schedule in similar negotiations issues that resulted in Sting ending up not signing with the company earlier in the year and Hogan Hall and Nash all agreeing to a reduced schedule with the company while looking to stabilize both rosters equally through the forced departures and injuries to the top names, getting strong indication last night on Shawn Michaels potentially returning on a full-time basis, with the Michaels comeback match which going into the pay-per-view was intentionally downplayed as a fight to perhaps lower expectations, ending up matching the hype with Michaels putting on a classic performance to show that he can still live up to his previous reputation opening the door for more future matches at the same time that former clique buddy Sean Waltman was officially released by WWE over the week in a mutual agreement to end his full-time run with the company, with Raw after the Kane return holding steady over the next quarter with a Van Damme vs Dreamer hardcore title unification match with Van Damme going over to write off the hardcore title, along with a comedic Finkel vs Lillian Angle to set up Lillian returning as the Raw brand full-time ring announcer. Triple H made his entrance at 10.50 p.m. before the final commercial break with the final quarter which featured two breaks followed by the entrances and first half of the Taker vs Hunter match, dropping sharply from the show high of the past half hour to a 3.9 rating, with the 9-minute match crossing past 11 p.m. into the 6-minute overrun with the ending and post-match angle rebounding 500,000 viewers back to a peak 4.3 rating with 5.5 million viewers making it the least-watched main event match on Raw in three months and only slightly above the hour average, with the match after the hot past several weeks of boosted numbers masked by Rock's performances and SummerSlam hype also seeing a massive drop from the Rock-driven main event numbers of the past month with around a million viewers decrease within the week and a bad sign for the Raw crew heading into the traditionally toughest time of the year in the fall TV season with the show overall after opening stronger than usual but not delivering Rock Lesnar or Michaels in prominent roles, not seeing the usual post-major pay-per-view bump to draw a routine 3.9 rating, 
ending the broadcast with the Raw brand getting another potential blow with Lesnar after costing Taker the number one contender match and despite now holding the undisputed title, announced as an exclusive SmackDown performer going forward with Raw set for a major challenge to sustain numbers for the rest of the year starting next Monday.